Hi, welcome to Shane Language. I'm your host, Alvin Lee, and with me I have two amazing artists. I have Moby Frankie, art director at Theorycraft, and also senior artist at Riot Games, Esben Rasmussen. And yes. also myself, former artist of Street Fighter and League of Legends. Uh, between us, we have a ton of art experience. So let's react to some art. Our first artist, we have uh, Banksy. I mean, I don't think I need to really introduce him to you guys. I mean, he's a very, very famous artist. Street artist, obviously, from the 90s. But probably the biggest artist in the world, you'd say? He's up there. For sure. He's up there. Yeah, for sure. yeah. Yeah. But this one has a little bit of a twist. Basically, he this piece was up for auction. A, you know, he hid a, a paper shredder in there until somebody actually bought it and put it up for auction and then shredded it on camera, right? That's something that he's doing, right? Banksy's always trying to like, w like raise awareness. And then of course you have the capitalists that are coming in and they're like, well, let's jack this mother up. I mean, I found it interesting that it didn't shred all the way down, right? It stopped at right. a certain point. And I really liked where it stopped because it gets shredded like right on, up until like the strings. So the only thing that is there kind of like, is the kind of ideal, if that makes sense. Uh, there's a little wrinkle to this whole story, by the way. Uh, there was a guy holding a bag in the audience. People say that you're not allowed to bring in bags into the auction at all, okay. ever. So there's a little bit of, of speculation that uh, this might have been staged, actually. Maybe. Uh, because on top of that, like this piece, like it's actually hanging on a wall. And it's like, you know, oh, uh, auctions never get hung on a wall. They're actually usually on a podium of some kind. Yeah, 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 you know? yeah, yeah. So not, um, all, not only that, but it's like it's in the corner, right? And then somebody's filming it at the time where it's yeah, perfect, like, perfect. Like, who yeah. does that? Yeah. It's either like a really amazing marketing ploy or he was actually trying to shred this thing. Um, like personally, I think if it was, if his intention was literally to destroy the piece, then I think he could have done a better job destroying it. You know I what mean, I mean? Technical difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> After this happened to the piece, the shredding, the piece basically doubled in value. So yeah, I, I think it had the opposite effect of what he wanted, you know? Um, anyway, I kind of feel like that's kind of Banksy story in a nutshell. Right. Every single time he does it, it's like, dun, 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 <laughs> right. the other way. Moving on. So yeah. this was actually right at the border um yeah. of palestine yeah. to israel yeah. and basically you know he's advocating for palestinian rights obviously Absolutely, yeah. and uh, rights all the way you know which is awesome but like you know that's why banksy is so i guess revered right because yeah. of his political statements totally so yeah banksy set this up in central park and he didn't put like any signage nothing and people that can walk by can buy it for 60 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, if you were smart, you would have just been like, I will take- I will take this whole stand. And I, will, I will purchase the old man as well. I will oh. take care of him. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't really do that though, right? You'd be like, this is a coffee. Yeah, no walking, one will right? ever know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he kind of is a bit of an art genius, right? Yes. Like when he thinks about these crazy yeah. things. Uh, this one here is called a die-faced tenor, you know, the Princess Diana's face on it instead of Queen Elizabeth, right? Right, right. The thing that's crazy about this one, is like he made like a briefcase full of money, yeah, yeah. right? Which and is probably worth more each dollar bill than its actual pound. Exactly, pound. yeah, yeah. So he made a, a, a shit ton of these, like a hundred thousand copies of them. Right. And he was throwing them out like on the street and immediately uh, people started using them. And so he actually stopped giving them out, um, like stopped throwing them on the street because then he realized that now he's making counterfeit money. You know? uh, yeah, that's oh, a yeah, good yeah. Idea. So he had to like put an end to that, but there's still like thousands in circulation. And so the value of them like aren't as insane. Like this would be your entry, like Banksy uh, collectible, you know? Yeah, yeah. So next we have... Hey, James Jean. Oh. <laughs> of course. We can't really have shape language without James Jean, right? I think that this is the one that kind of put him on the map, right? Like this was the, the piece he did for Prada. Right, right. I had the luxury of, um, of meeting James Jean when he was 18 years old. He took us under the wing 
under his wing in New York and just like showed us around like all these amazing uh, studio, art studios and everything. And at the same time, he was showing us like his sketchbooks, those ones that he used for his, um, you know, his first publishing, you know, book. That inspired me to, to, to go ahead with where I was going to go. Right. So you can tell that he was like ahead of his time oh or, or at least like, you know, a cut above the rest. A cut, like significant. Yeah. And then he goes on and he does like, I'm going to do some fine art. I'm going to do some print. I'm going to do some jewelry. I'm going to do some other yeah, things. Everything. Boom, yeah, boom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, holy he's, shit. He's okay. A, he's a master marketer. He's so prolific. Yeah. And how much art he still churns out, like on a regular basis, yeah. is actually quite awe inspiring. And he doesn't have to. Like, I do think that like, He's created pieces that are newer that I prefer more, mm -hmm. um, but um, it's still awesome. Okay, let's take a look at some other ones. And this was actually in Sawtell, um, and I think this right. is like an ode to the neighborhood, actually. Yeah. And he bought like a billboard. So good, and I love that little soup bucket <laughs> head duck and duck guy the <laughs> with the, with the turtle shield. Yes. yes. Who does this? Why? Right. It works. Let's take a look. Cause See this, that that one I like better. Than the first one. <laughs> <laughs> this is a this is a more recent one, obviously. Yeah, it's this awesome. is very new. Beautiful. Um, this is a triptych, and I believe it's massive. Absolutely, like the size of this wall. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like. You know um, what I'm getting a little bit? I'm getting a little bit Mobius feelings. I'm getting a little bit Dali too. Dali, yeah. He's he's incredible with colors. Yeah, his understanding of like, you know, like warms and cools and like when to make something um, more saturated or they're desaturated, like he's his a master at that. Yeah. Well. It's actually more of a high key totally. print, right? Yeah. So the darkest dark might be at a value, let's say of seven, going up to white. He's really good at complementary colors, like a, yeah. a pairing certain colors with each other so that they look very appealing, you know? Because I think what he's going for is actually more like abstract yeah. Like he wants the like the whole piece to kind of just have like an overall arching like a uh, color palette and feeling. Yeah. But then when you like really look close, there's actually some structure behind it. Totally. I really like all the texture that's going on mm -hmm. like behind all the flat colors, which I think yeah. are, like totally. that that right lower corner is like super juicy for the eye. Absolutely. Yeah. And visual rest as well in some strange yeah. kind of way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm starting to notice that his style is actually going uh, less figurative. So in the beginning, he was doing a lot more values, a lot more like, you know, um, you know, female faces, those kind of things. Yeah. And um, the, his more recent stuff is starting to look more graphic. Like he's using like more line art and then like just filling it with like a texture or like a, a gradient. Mm -hmm. Kind of similar to like Murakami in a way where it's just like a very distinct like line art style that he just can uh, repeat easily. Whoever has to like draw those lines, it's gonna take, it's gonna take forever. Mm -hmm. to do like every single line, you know. Uh, James definitely has assistance now. Yeah, good. <laughs> um, because like, you know, he can't do all this himself anymore. I, I want to be a, like an artist that has assistance. <laughs> you know, you've made it when you have Well, assistance. Michelangelo had assistance, <laughs> right? Right. Leo yeah. had assistance. Exactly. Okay, let's oh, yeah. keep going. Okay, this, this is at the Lot Museum, um, you know, just to give you a sense of the scale of yeah. how big these pieces are. Uh -huh. Crazy that he's gotten to that level though, that he's um, he's showing at museums now. Totally. You know what I mean? It's not even galleries anymore. It's museums. <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, that is next level. I mean, he deserves it, obviously. He's always been a rock star, but now he's like, you know, um, he's going to go down in art history, obviously. Oh, big yeah. time. Oh, no doubt. Basically, he kind of um, inspired an entire generation of artists, I'd say, easily. Like, I, I, I idolize this guy. It's crazy. Like, in terms of, like, his achievements, anyways. Yeah. Oh, totally. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's done something that is uh, pretty much impossible to do. It's so hard to do. So. Yeah. All right, next we have Sean Gordon Murphy, of course. Uh, Esben, since, you know, <laughs> Since you're such a big fan of his work, can you tell the audience a little bit about Sean Gordon Murphy? For sure. Uh, Sean Gordon Murphy is a mastermind, in my opinion. So you have uh, Off Road, you have Punk Rock Jesus, and then you, like more recently, you start having Batman the White Knight. You, of course, have, and, or even more recently, is the upcoming one that's called Plot Holes. 
who from a very technical point of view can do so many things really, 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 really well. So he's, yeah. a, he's a tour de force. He really is. He like is. in terms of a draftsman, unbelievable. Like he can literally draw anything. Like his technical ability in terms of drawing vehicles is incredible and i don't think the viewers at home really know like uh, unless they've actually tried drawing like a car or something like that how hard it is to draw a car yeah and this is all traditional yeah like i know he just sketches it out like with a blue pencil and just goes straight to ink yeah right you know like that's crazy like that kind of draftsmanship is um rare in these days it's very yeah. Rare. yeah yeah uh i think this is a page from uh, punk rock jesus I believe his usage of blacks is uh, needs to be noted here. Absolutely. Um, and Simple. what's your, your favorite saying about blacks? Uh, moment? Our imaginations grow in shadow space. Uh, definitely. Imagination. That's a good saying. It is. I love that. that. The first time I've never heard, heard that. Dude, no, no. that is so good. <laughs> no, no, but that's why. It's, like, yeah. yeah it's, like it's, if it's you right. have a silhouetted character, that's the, the impact, right? That's the, the, the amazing thing about it, right? So you don't have to inform the viewer with everything. Uh, and oh, uh, here's Jesus another Christ. example of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Right? It's just binary, black and white. And to, oh. the, to the right colorist, this could like Jesus. be so good. Yeah. yeah. It oh, could also like, God. to the wrong colorist, exactly. it could also be ruined. Yes. Yeah, that's why I mentioned that. <laughs> it kind of summarizes a little bit of like some of the overall theme of Batman White Knight. And this is like where the Joker kind of like lure, it's early in the book, lures people in and everybody's watching this kind of like uncontrolled yeah. brutality when his anger and his, his mood kind of like so cool. lets go of him. Yeah. yeah, so it's like a, a role reversal in this story. It is, it's, and yeah. it's bloody brilliant because it brings the, it brings the humanity to both characters that's and it awesome. brings that nuance. And that's why this story, I highly recommend it, is so, fresh and wonderful it's okay. like a batman story like you never read it so who, who's actually writing the story is it he is sean get out he's the, uh, also the the writer <laughs> yeah that is why he's fucking he's a mastermind okay mine just got mastermind blown. well he, he is a comic book god he, yes. he's up there he's up there he's probably the, the best uh, in my opinion oh, in history at the moment yeah. yeah for him to reach where he is now it's taken so much sacrifice and work to right. get to where he is there's a 180 degree rule uh that he's actually not breaking with this and i think that that's a great teaching moment teaching moment teaching moment the 180 degree rule <laughs> So when we're doing something in storytelling, if it's sequential art or if it's movies, whatever it is, we have our subject here that we're illustrating or filming and we draw an, an invisible line here and we can keep the camera moving around this line. But when we start to break it, there's a flip happens. He's literally on the edge of both on both sides of the of the hemisphere. Yes, um, but he does not cross it and joker and batman are still on the left and the right uh, the moment you pass that hemisphere uh joker would be on the right and batman would be on the left and that just like very disorienting for the for the viewer and, and the reader you know yes Ooh. so next we have android jones oh yeah i yeah. met him actually uh, he was a huge inspiration for for me uh, earlier wow. um, but they're all done digitally uh, they're incredible and i think he was one of the first people who really explored this sort of style and and he's very much an artist about you know illustrating kind of transcendence and like the infinite in his kind of like complex patterns and even if you zoom in there's always like more and more and more to it oh um, yeah so Absolutely. it's very striking the repetition of shapes and everything so he uses 3d elements he uses kind of like sampling photos too i love his art in that in the context that he's doing it's like this is like a, a a wonderful example of like art for art's sake. His art functions for his spirituality, right? Like for where he wants to go. This geisha that he's done, like he actually like oh, projected it onto the Sydney Opera House. Like he's clearly he's using a ton of like custom brushes. It seems like there's there's not much restraint of the custom brushes because a little overboard in my opinion. It's well, just it's like, like like a squint test, right? It's like, like if you if you like so much eyes, stuff. Squint your eyes, right? The the um, the management of value is all over the place, right? Mm -hmm. There's 
the like color. where are your eyes supposed to focus? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Obviously, like her face is the only area that is right. less visually active. If I look at it, I'm just like, okay, there's a lot of like cool stuff. There's stuff. Stuff on top of stuff on Lots top of, of stuff. stuff. But yeah, exactly. There's like there's like crazy, you know, rhythms and stuff. But you um, know. Esben, you want to interject? I, I feel like you have an opinion. He was experimenting so much. He was one of the, the people that kind of like try to go forward with like, how does this digital medium kind of work and speak? Sure. Um, is it a little bit busy? Yeah. You know, like bit. personally, I could maybe do without the honeycombs on the left side and the I like the honeycombs. and the, and the, I think and the boxes. But, but you know, like, dude, I like it. It's still, I, I don't know. I still, I still really like it. No, obviously, we have differing opinions of Andrew and Joy Jones, of which course. is great. Yeah, which is why yeah, we're here to exactly. talk about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, so basically, he does that, yeah. and at the end, it goes to black, mm-hmm. and then he just fades into his original piece. Aww. So, yeah. The question is, is it amazing? I think for a lot of people out there in the world, I think that it is amazing. I think people, when they see it, like they don't understand like what Photoshop even does, like like what the capabilities are. Uh huh. That performance was essentially just a, a custom brush that is being activated by pen pressure. Yes. And he's basically just moving it around on the Cintiq aimlessly. It's painful to watch, right? But it's a little cringy. A it little is. Bit. It is. It, it looks more complex, but it's like super simple. It's very simple. It's but very yeah. simple, <laughs> right? But so, the people who are watching probably don't realize that. Yeah, that's yeah, the thing. yeah. There is that performance aspect, which is pretty cool, actually. When you're watching that, yeah. like projected onto the opera house, it's pretty spectacular to look at. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But the execution in terms of like the art side of it, there really isn't really. It's just him tracing aimlessly on a Cintiq. Well, I think it could also like the whole sort of presentation of it could have been like an afterthought, yeah. right? Like yeah. that it wasn't intentionally planned like that. But like this is his market and this is what he's doing. Yeah, I'm, I mean, and he's still doing that now, by the way. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. like yeah. a lot of his art is still performance art. Yeah, yeah. So that's a, that's why I included this. It's important to note that he can actually paint amazingly well, mm-hmm. um, but you know, he's choosing to use these the crazy like brushes as as a, as, as his tool set, mm-hmm. and um, like I think he had like this piece that kind of like uh, was three three D in a dome or something, and yeah, yeah. and it, you get kind of like float through like the this like hyperspace of all this crazy psychedelic art, mm-hmm. and honestly, it, it looks awesome. Yeah. This is all expressive. You, yeah. There's no rules to what he's doing. Yeah, yeah, no it's subjective. Lola, I'm sorry, can you go over by the rope over there? Over here. Lola, come on.